Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and it is Triple Play Day. And I'm here with Natalie and Misty and we have some awesome ideas for you today all about the Drunkard's Path. Yep, round two. This is the second round time we've done this. Two. We really love the Drunkard's yeah. Path. It is so versatile. There's so many things you can do I with know. it. I know. It's pretty amazing. I have a I have several fun layout options on my pattern. I know. Because I couldn't decide. It's hard right? to choose. Yeah. It is. Yeah. All right. So we are going to start with Misty today. All right. Let's do it. All right. So this is my quilt behind me. I called it Primrose Path. And this is the block. We're just making 20 of these big blocks. I love this fabric. I love it too. It's really it's fun. And so to make this quilt, you're going to need four packs of this beautiful collection called Adele in Spring by Sandy Gervais for Riley Blank. You're also going to need four packs of your background fabric. Then you're going to need three quarters of a yard for your inner border one and a half yards for your outer border, and five and three quarter yards of backing fabric or three yards of 108. You're also going to need the small Drunkard's Path template that we have here at Missouri Star, and that should do it. So let's go ahead and dive this in. This is a nice big quilt. It's a really big quilt. It measures 79 by 95, so it's a great size. That's perfect. Yeah. Good size twin. It is. Mm -hmm. All right, so to make this, we are just going to make sets of eight. So you're gonna need eight prints and eight background squares for every block. And so you can just pick a variety. I wanted it to be nice and scrappy and I really only um, stacked up about four at a time just because it's easier to cut that way. But I'm just- Yeah, that depends on your how, how uh, sharp your rotary blade is. Yeah. <laughs> well, and with the curves, I just didn't want things to get off, right. yeah. you know? It's true. Wanted to be a little bit more careful than I am sometimes. Now, did you cut your backgrounds with your squares, or did you cut them separately? Well, you could. You can pair them up however you want, but for every block, you need four, um, eight and eight. Okay. So, eight print and eight um, I'm just always colors. interested in how everybody does it, because we all go about things so differently. Yeah. And so then I'm just going to lay, I always start with my curve. I don't know why, but I'm just going to start with my curve in the corner and cut that. Whoops, maybe. <laughs> Let's try that again. It's hard to get constant pressure on a curve. Yes. And so you do have to, you, you do just have, have to, to look watch. At that. Mm -hmm. So then there is that um, one, and then we can trim this side down. So you're not, you have very, very little waste. Yeah, it would actually be pretty impossible to, to start, start here. Yeah, you want to start with the curve. Mm -hmm. And so we're lining this up with the four and a half inch line on our template. And I like to cut these little pieces off first and then come back and just trim out that, it's just so that inside waste. curve. Okay, and so then we have these trimmed and I'm just gonna put those in separate piles because I'm gonna pair up um, my print curves with a background outside. So I'm just gonna grab some of these and we can cut these as well. Like a magician, look at yes, that. Yes, just like that. <laughs> You have to make that noise. Okay. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right, so then we'll cut our curve first, just like we did before. Line it up on that edge. There we go, and then these will go there, and then we can trim this down to four and a half. Just like so. Perfect. All right, so now we have these opposite sets and you can see you're gonna need eight like this and eight like this for every block that you're gonna make. And so let's just go ahead and make one of these. And so to do that, I like to fold it in half and find my center line and then do the same here. And then I just line it up like so. And I put a pin right in there. Do we have pins handy? We sure do. Here we go. There we go. And I'll just stick a pin in there just to keep my middles lined up. And then we can pull that around. And Nat, you right. want to sew that? Sure. All right. You know, you notice how I did that, like I let her do the sewing yes. on this. <laughs> it's actually not that hard. It's really not. No. Well, it can be a little fidgety. It can be a little fidgety. So it's interesting because um, I was watching the sewing team girls do uh -huh. some of these. Yeah. And 
literally some of them have a pin like every inch. Yes. So do what you feel comfortable with. That's you know, what if I was you... just going to say. If you feel like you need more pins, then use them. There's yeah. no, no harm. I didn't use any pins, but not all of mine came out perfectly either. Yeah. I, so. I only did the one in the middle. Yeah. I found that that was the most helpful for me, but, um, you know, I probably would have had a better result if I had took the time to pin more, <laughs> but you know, I don't think so. <laughs> It just is what it is right now. It just right is now. what it is. I'm not a fan of the pins. I find that they get in my way and make it harder to um, manipulate the fabric. The, 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 yeah. This is my daughter no, over here. No, I feel the same. <laughs> That's why I only did the one. Right? I was like, if I could just make sure I've got this half of the fabric on the right side and this half, then I'm good. And then here we yeah, have one the opposite way. If we want to show one more and we can just press that. And I would love to press this. Awesome. And then now, I have a bunch of others ready. I am just going to roll this back. Is that what you did? Yep, that's exactly what I did. And you know what is, this is actually probably one of the most fun part of the process for me because it just, it you just look works. at that and you're just like, oh, I we agree. did it. When you pull it out from under the machine and it's kind of rumply, you're like, I don't know. And then you give it a press and it just looks And you're like, wow, awesome. I did it. It looks awesome. I'd be done by now if this wasn't pinned. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, then take out the pin if you don't Maybe. like it just stopping me from lining up the top edge. Well, then don't use it. No, See, I like, I like everyone has a like preference. This. Well, because Missy... And you just, you just curve it. Yep. Well, and it's good to show both ways, right? That's what I was going to say. I think it's great to see how, how you know, there are different methods. There's right. many different ways to get what you, you want. You are so prepared. So we're going to put, All I'm right. going to put your stacks over there. Yes, and I can start laying out. So remember, this is our block. And so this is what we're going to make. So I'm just going to start laying these out oh that's interesting you do yours by row i start I from the center and work my way oh, up oh funny yeah i have to see, i have a harder time seeing the pattern you know that's always, that's always been a real challenge for me to see the pattern yeah. and so i have to actually see it that Here, makes sense oh that? yeah you sure can oops this way look at this if you want and then this way yeah i just think when you see this little curve done it's like it's the I've best. just created a little miracle. It's magic. Yes, I feel the same way. We'll do this guy. And this guy's right go. there. Yeah. Absolutely. I had to look oh, very closely at the pattern. Oh, now we've got Let's two purples. See. Oh, yeah, no. Get that one out of here. Dang it. Okay. There we go. And then this guy. And then two curves in the corner. There we go. So cute. And that is it. And now we're just going to sew this together in rows until we have our finished block like this. So it fits into the uh, quilt just like this. And you can see it's four across by five down. And you just sew them right so together. Right together, no sashing or anything. And I actually really love this secondary shape I that too. comes I when, you, yeah. when you set them together, which is really fun. And then I just put this little two and a half inch um, inner border and a six inch outer border. And the quilting pattern I did is posies, which I love. I think it's perfect for this. And then my backing fabric, I use this beautiful, Oh, that's so pretty. Print. Looks like lilacs. Yes. It is, I think. I think it, it is, is lilacs, lilacs. Yeah. yeah. It turned out so great. And so, Jenny, I think you're up next. I'm next. Okay, so let's take a look at my quilt behind me. It's so beautiful. Isn't this great? So this, I called this flower power because it just like, you know, goes out from so this pretty. central yeah. And, yeah. and it's really pretty. I just love it. Love this fabric. So to make my quilt, what you're going to need is four packs of five inch squares. And I have used Right as Rain by Kim Deal for Henry Glass. You're also going to need some background fabric and you're going to need about three yards of background fabric. You can use a layer cake and cut them down. They're going to be cut into nine and a half inch squares. Uh, you're going to need some border about one and a half yards. And your backing out here is five and three quarter yards or three yards of a 108. Isn't that great? So That's pretty. Beautiful. And the quilting pattern is cotton candy. Love that quilting pattern. I think it's a really fun quilting pattern. The quilt is 79 by 95, and you are also going to need the large Drunkard's Path template. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So let me show you how to do this. All right, so to make mine, it is actually made out of four patches. So here's my little four patch right here, which means what you're going to do is you're just going to choose four squares that are different colors. And you're going to sew those together in a four patch. And so we have two here and we've got this one and this one. And we are just going to sew these two together and these two together and then fold them and sew those together. And it's going to give you a block like this. Now, because we took four five inch squares and sewed them, 
we have a seam, it makes this nine and a half. Yeah. And so while I love to use a layer cake, um, the idea of cutting down every little layer cake square seemed a little daunting to me. So I just use yardage, cut nine and a half inch strips, and then subcut those into nine and a half inch squares. So I have my square here. Awesome. And uh, I, I heard you, and I just didn't know if, <laughs> if you had something to add to that right that well, moment. I was actually just thinking about how many other blocks that we could cut with the drunkard's I cut. Know. Like, what about the pinwheel? Yes. Right? Or what about what a strip block? What or, happens if? Right? You know. I love that. All right. So I'm going to stack these up just like this. And I did stack my, I made them in pairs. Yeah. So I stacked my four patch with my, um, you know, with my background fabric. Mm -hmm. And then I just laid this in the corner like this and matched it up real nice. And then I made a cut. And so just go nice and slow because you're cutting through a couple of seams. For a second there, I forgot you were left-handed. I was like, how are you going to do that? <laughs> yeah, I thought about that too. Yeah. I was also, I was going to say, now this is how you do it if you're left-handed. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. This is definitely left-handed cutting. And um, look how fun that is. Awesome. I mean, that shape is just Very cool. all those little shapes that come when you do it. And so then this one, I'm going to just put them here. And... And we are going to go ahead and give that a little trim. And I have a little more to cut off than, uh, than Misty did, but... But still not much. Not much. Mm -mm. And just make sure you have a good hold on your ruler. And a nice sharp blade. And a yep. nice sharp blade. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and take this piece and attach it to our big piece. And I did the same thing Misty did. I did a crease. You guys are so good. <laughs> and match these two little seams up over here and found my center and put this on here. And then put a little pin in here. Oh. Oh. So guys, you know, see this pin with the bend in it? <laughs> We are forever keeping these pins, trying to straighten them, trying to make them work. You know what? I'm done with that. I'm if I have a, I'm just gonna throw it away. I, I can't. Know, you straightened it out really well. I'm, so I'm now always really saving it. <laughs> right. I'm always saving those, and then I'm just like, why? Why am I doing this? I have a lot of pins. That is funny. I think we get just into the habit of doing that, though. Yeah, you know. Okay to save it. Sure, if you want to. I'm, I'm not. I'm not but saving it, it anymore. It's driving me crazy. Throw it out. It's driving me crazy. All right, so I'm just going to start sewing. Yep, this. she's going to start from that little edge and sew it around. This is a giant pin right here. There we go. Oops, I'm actually going to do the same as Natalie. I'm having a hard time with this bigger block with the pin. I kind of do it. I kind of I kind of set this on here to just to make sure that I know I'm in the center. Yeah. And then yeah. once I get started, I I go. Let it go. Yeah. That makes sense. Taking my time. I've got a little hanging off the edge here. Just trim it off. We will just trim it off. No big deal. There we go. There's All right. One. Now, when you sew, do you sew with your large piece on the bottom and the small piece on the top? Yes. Okay, that's yep. what I do too. Yep. All right. So, do you want to try Let's that with the pin out? And see how it goes. There we go. All right. So now I'm I'm just gonna. Sometimes you get this little edge right here. Sometimes you don't. I'm just gonna trim that off because there's a lot of moving parts in this block. You know, it's it's not really gonna matter. Yeah, don't pull this too too hard. I'm not. I'm just, just turning it. Well, and you can check your middles as you go by if you have right. that little crease there. Absolutely. Yeah. No judgment, Misty. No judgment at all. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Here, you can throw that away. Okay. All right. Shown how to do this. I've got some blocks already done. All right, you can toss that. Here we have a nice straight pin. And there you go. Your job, sorry. <laughs> She's like, wait, wait. I, I only have one job. All right, now unlike Misty and Natalie, I have a super hard time seeing the pattern. And so I literally start 
from my center, I put that on my board and I build it out from there. And so you can see my center right here is four of these middles together. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put four of these together like this. And as you go to sew these together, some of them will fit nicely. And we, had, we found that no matter how hard we tried, everything didn't always match perfectly. The only, the only the thing center I'm noticing that doesn't match is when you're trying to put the outside yeah. corner against the inside. Yes. This part doesn't match, but yes. always your four patches will match up. Mm -hmm. Those are, um, these just don't line up perfectly and that's because you cut the curve from the at a different side. side. Right. Yeah. 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 So you're just pulling it in. Yeah. Here. And so, so this is kind of one of those really no well, I stress. Think it looks great. Yeah. Oh, I, I do too. It. I do it too. I actually, when I was making it, I was really worried about it. I'm like, these aren't matching, right. you know, I'm maybe, if I'm, am I not doing it right? And then I'm like, oh, you know, so we had somebody else make a bunch of blocks and it's like, oh, theirs didn't match either. So we're good. Yeah, we are good. So you'll, your four patch will match up and you'll do that. So then when you're ready to start your next row, you can see out here, Honestly, I did I the, a whole quilt of just I those know, circles. Just the circles. I so actually cool. had that laid out on the wall, just the circles. Yeah. And I had, a, I had a, a circle of color and a circle of white that was surrounded by color. Yeah. And so every other one, I did a bunch of layouts too. It was really fun. But for me to see this, I had this block here. And then I did like, I called them Mickey Mouse ears in the corners. <laughs> yeah. I did my mouse ears, you know. And so, so then yeah. I just started out here with, with this one in the corner and this one here and this one here like this. And uh, literally I just laid them on my design wall and did it and made another row that went out. Oh, I would never put that there because there's two reds. <laughs> so like this, yeah. and then this yeah. one's gonna go out here like this. And basically you'll have a great diagram and you'll just be able to uh, start laying that out. You know, obviously my table here isn't big enough to do that. But as you go out, you know, so then this one is out here. So then the next one you're going to put out is going to be, these, these it's going to be lines. the white, the larger white square with the little edge. Yeah. And so it just lays out really fun. So yep. Like that yeah, so like it'll that. go, so it'll go out here like this. So this goes yeah. in the corner mm -hmm. and then these two go out here like this. I mean, we're always just kind of, I always just start squaring up the corner and then these center blocks again are two two white like ones. That. It goes this way yeah. and then this way. I love it. And then this one over here again is one of these curves around the corner. So I called so mine cool. flower power because it just starts with this little flower and it just blooms out and blooms out bigger and gets bigger, you know, and it's flower power. And so in these corners, I thought this was kind of fun little framing motif, you know, made it look like that. And that just comes from flipping that, uh, that block around. So it's easy to make four patches. And what would it look like if we did two and a half inch squares? How about strips? Oh, How about, yeah. you know, awesome. so many blocks you could just cut and see what happens. And so mm -hmm. I hope you have some fun with this and I guess we're on to you, Natalie. All right. All right, Natalie, it's you. All right. Well, I'm excited about this. I, I love doing this, this project. I love um, it. This is my quilt behind me. I decided to call it Sidewinder because it reminded me of the Sidewinder snake path, you know, that where they kind of like slither, slither sideways. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I thought it was very cool. All right. So to make my quilt, you'll need one package of 10 inch print squares. And I used Paisley Place by Dina June for Wilmington. Um, you'll need a half a yard for your inner border a yard of outer border, four and a half yards for backing. And then I use this cute little uh, diagonal stripe. And so you'll need about three quarters of a yard for your binding. I love that I binding. love that, yeah. Yeah, it is, it's great. I just thought it was so cute. It's very cool. And so your quilt's pretty good size too. It is, it's 61 by 69. And like if that? I had used a background fabric and added a layer cake, it would be Queen giant. Size. Yeah. yeah, the good same job. size as your guys' quilt. Yeah. yeah. But mine had a, it has a pretty decent set of lights and darks. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, until you get a, into these colors, but it's, it's still beautiful, I, I think. I love it, yeah. It's kind of but fun. here's the big deal with your quilt. Mm -hmm. You used both. I, I did. I used, I used both templates because I wanted to see if I could make, well, I mean, originally I was thinking of something a little bit more like wedding ring-ish. I was thinking uh -huh. maybe if I, if I wow. put the two together, I could do something that looked like a double yeah. wedding ring, but... I never quite got there and I got distracted by all the different layouts and I was going to say you laid this out a ton of ways. Yeah. So uh, that's anyways. awesome. 
All right. Yeah. Well, so so let me, show us how to let make me show it. you how to make this Absolutely. quilt. All right. So I selected from my layer cake just a light and a dark. Um, and I put them together in sets before I, I kind of sorted my whole thing out before I got started because I wanted to make sure that I didn't end up with, you know, a bunch of darks left over or mm. a bunch of lights. I have to say, just looking at this pack, I didn't think the fabric was all that. But when you see it's all deceiving. the different it's pieces, it's really beautiful. It's really, really pretty. This this little looks like watercolor. Yes. Uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. I just really, really love it. I yeah. do too. I think oh, it's lovely. Oh, did you show the back? Show the back because no, it's cute. So this backing is gorgeous. Look at this backing. Isn't that gorgeous? It's this so big, pretty. beautiful print. And really, it, almost all the prints in the line would be beautiful backing. And then really how, much, how much did you use for the backing? Do you remember? Um, it was... Because that, it, it's four and, and a half yards. Four and a half. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You said that. Oh, and the, the, the stitch pattern is simply roses. It's really pretty. So it's beautiful. It's a beautiful one. I love that. Gorgeous. All right. Show so we take our, two, we'll take our two together. We're going to start with our large size. And oh, that's so funny. In we'll, my mind, you would work from small to big. But no. Nope. I love that. Okay. And nope. I'm already thinking, surprised. how is she going to cut this on the wrong side? <laughs> what do you mean on the wrong side? Oh, because I'm right-handed. <laughs> <You're> right-handed. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So we're going to do our large size first. Okay. And we're just going to swap them. We're going to cut this one at nine and a half. Okay. Which actually will be easier for me if I turn it. There you go. Yeah, so if ever you find yourself cutting, especially curves, and you're like doing something weird with your hand, turn it around, do yeah. something, because it should not be difficult and you don't want to get cut. Yeah. So I don't typically pin my curves. Okay. But um, you can if you want to. I'll just go with that. But what I, what I found myself doing is um, flipping it so that I lined up these like this to start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it always looked like this as I was going to the sewing machine. Right. Mm. And always. that way I could have a nice flat edge to begin. And then it, you just you just curve it around so that it goes with your, um, Stays with it, your, it goes with your, your curve. curve. The other thing you could do, just as an, an aside, if you're wanting to not use pins but have things stay in place, is just put a little dab of glue oh, that's at true. your starting yeah, and your ending absolutely. or your starting middle and end. You could just put a little dot of like apple glue would hold it yeah, down. Absolutely. That's a great idea. So, all right. So I'm just going to start this. Yep. And they're line up this edge. It's a nice big curve. So these are these are pretty easy. And I just kind of make my my top at my bottom. Yes. It's easier to curve this piece around to like I mean, you can almost pull it straight. Yeah. Whichever direction than it is to um, try and manipulate this. This curve stretches too, but it's not as easy. I found that too. So. And don't pull on the top. Just, just kind of let, yeah. let it flow. Let it stay nice and neat. No pulling. No pulling. And if, if you find that that's a, a tricky thing for you, then Pin. go back to pinning. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I got a little bit of an overhang too. The other that's thing right. is, is if they lay flat, me, just trim it off. Let me try again. Go for it. <laughs> it's not necessary, but go for it. All right. So we're all done with a large template here. That? And what I'm going to do is just trim that off. I'm having a hard time doing this, not using my lip. You know, I'm like, oh, you've got a concentration lip. Got to chew my, on that bottom lip. I got to concentrate. <laughs> This one, would, I was going to see if it would come out exact. Still tugging a little. Yeah. That's all right. Just takes a little practice. Yep. And it really isn't a big deal. No, especially on yours because it's just two colors, right? Yeah. yeah and we're going to square it down even more. Oh, really? Yep. Oh. We can't get nine and a half once we cut the curve again, so, oh. so it drops down to eight and a half. Okay. All right. So let me just trim that off. So now you can stack these up and... Uh, and make your second cuts. You can, if you're not comfortable stacking them, you can do them individually, totally mm -hmm. fine. So now we're gonna cut this little guy here. 
And then we're gonna use this, this to get the next cut, which is eight and a half. So you pull that back. And so see, if it hangs off, it's no big deal because mm. you're cutting that you're off anyways. That off anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so you just want to make sure that's all nice and straight, it squared is up. Really cool I also now. watched as I was cutting, I watched to make sure that this ended up with, it should be an inch and a quarter uh -huh. measurement mm -hmm. there. So, you know, I'm, let me just do this individually. Um, because this was part of the way that I kept my blocks really square. As I just watched to make sure that it landed about in that spot so that they were all very similar. And that helps because you're lining up all of these uh, you, oh, yeah, you're lining yeah. up all of those, so those you do, do want up. them to match up. Right. Well, just want to double check before I yep. slice it off. <laughs> so. so then this one gets and this guy back in the so middle cool. here. I'm just right. realizing that those were the same prints. Like looking at this, I thought each of these was different. I know. I made I made I sets of out. two yeah. of yeah. everything. Yeah. That makes so much sense. It's awesome. And really, there's so many fun ways to lay this out. I love that about the Drunkard's Path. It's like half square triangles. There's just so many options. Mm -hmm. Gets addictive when you're playing with the layout. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I thought about these is that they kind of look like macaroni noodles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with the little, the fat little macaroni noodles. I thought they were kind of cute. cute. So. Oh, oh, I've got this little tiny corner. This is where it's. Oh, are you kind of putting the. I did, it, I did it backwards. You're putting the curve don't have, on don't top. Have. I'll do the other one right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Here we go. Try it. I did Try it. it like that. I did it with. with it the, came out pretty good. <laughs> I did it with the little curve on top. There you know, go. that's our habit though. We put this, we generally put the smaller piece on small piece on top. On top. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, change my ways with this one. Let me just make sure I actually get this right. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Same size. <laughs> A relief, couple right? time, well, a couple times while I was making it, I wasn't sure if I did the large size first oh. or the small size first. And so while I was actually sewing the quilt, I did one the opposite, and you can't get it the same size. Oh, really? It doesn't work. Oh, how funny. <laughs> All right. All right. Press that, press press that, that one. one yeah. That one actually matched up because yeah, I did it Yeah, it goes right. a little easier that way. There we go. All right. So now to make this block... Um, all I did was put my two sets together this way. So these end up being a set and then you mm. just line them up with whatever um, oh, pattern cool. you're trying to make. Oh, gosh. So these end up going like, whoops, let me see. That one goes like that and that one goes like this. So you can join those two together. Okay. And am I looking for anything to match up? Yeah, just this center seam right okay, here. Okay, perfect. The rest of them don't match up till you hit other seams. Okay. And then these go together? Yep. And then, um, so, the, let me just double check because, all right, so the, there, every other row is different. So this row, they go like this, and this row, these ones go down. So you just have to watch that. So that's and your that first one. And that one goes... Yep, and then this one goes the opposite direction. Okay. Can be a little tricky. And this is also one, by the way, that I did lay out before I started sewing. I, you know, I wanted my whole layout to go where I wanted it, and I wanted to make sure that I could move my blocks based on colors and it's fun. You did more than one layout. Yeah. I did. I did so do many. several fun layouts, and I think we're going to have some diagrams in the pattern that oh, you good. can you can look at. So you have lots of options, but yeah. So then oh. they go. It goes together like that, and it creates that that side sidewinder side pattern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is so cool. I love it. That's. It's just as simple as that, and you can. I mean, we did circles. We did little half like rainbows. You yeah. could do them all together so they kind of look like little watermelon wedges or so so cute. all kinds of fun so things. Cute. I love it. So again, it's 61 by 69 and um, just a great size quilt. Simply Roses. Beautiful fabric. Beautiful backing. Gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. So yeah. All I hope, right. I hope you like it.
Well, this was great, you guys. We all loved our patterns and what we did, and yes. we love the Drunkard's Path. It's a so fun, fun tutorial for us, and we hope you guys enjoyed this triple play on the Drunkard's Path from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi, everybody. It's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I am here with Natalie and with Misty, and we hope you enjoyed watching our latest triple play. You can find us together on the third Friday of each month as we hit another tutorial out of the park. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe and click that bell to be notified each time we release a new video. See you next time.